Houdini 19 is out, and in the last video, I took a look at how Material X and Karma worked, but I was not able to figure out how to get Displacement to actually work, so I wanted to cover that now that some of the comments were suggesting how to fix that, so I figured I would go over how we can actually get Displacement to work with Material X inside of Karma and Karma XPU. So my previous setup, if you saw, you'd end up with something like this. You don't have any displacement going on in here. It's just uh, a flat material. And that's because if I look at the shader graph, you can see that we just have this standard surface. There is no input for a displacement. We do have a displacement node. And when you try to use this Material X surface material with the displacement plugged in, if I go ahead, actually, if I jump back to the geometry context and set that as the output and you'll see what happens in our viewport. So we lose all of our material on our object. There's no displacement, nothing going on here. And that's not what we're looking for, obviously. So some of the comments suggested the solution to this is to actually use a node called the collect node. So let me go ahead and bring this back over. And the way this works is just like the surface material, you just output this into the shader one and then the displacement into shader two. And then we can go ahead and just set this back to the ground material. And when I pull this up now, you're gonna see after it initializes that we actually have some displacement going on. I'll give it a second here to load, because it's our 8K textures. You see now we actually have displacement in our scene, which is what we're looking for. And you can actually go in, let me just make this window a little bit smaller. You can actually go into the material here and play around with some of these settings. So if I set this down to like 0.5, it'll initialize here and lower our displacement value. However, there we go. If you want to change the tiling, which if you don't know, use the tiled image and then an absolute value set to a vector two. If I wanna change this down to like one, you can see we can change it, but once it starts rendering in here, it doesn't actually update. So to get it to update, you will need to come up to this and restart the render. And then it'll rebring in all of the textures and everything, and it will be showing up properly. Once it all loads in, give it a second. Maybe. It's trying to go. Like I said, XPU is in alpha, so there is still some things that are going on with that that aren't perfect. But now you see that it has updated properly, and let's just go ahead and set this displacement value back to one because I liked it with a little bit more displacement. There we go. And we have our displacement back. So that's a quick overview of that, and also something that I wanted to note here, one of the Hive presentations I saw had a quick tip for a hotkey. So if you hit Shift R, it's going to switch between your OpenGL or Houdini GL viewport and the Karma render. So you can use that to quickly go between the two. Super, super useful, something that you're gonna use a lot. Uh, Solaris is also something that I'm gonna be looking into here in the future. I started to play around with the asset gallery and that workflow and it seems super, super powerful and it was a lot of fun to play around with with the little time that I played around with it. So expect that to be coming because that I think is going to be the main workflow for Karma and probably something that you're gonna be wanting to use just in general for world building. Uh, it's gonna be super, super powerful for any of that. So keep an eye out for that in the future, just here in a few days, I'll be hopefully taking a look at that. Also trying to get Redshift implemented into the Solaris context, get a uh, Redshift Hydra Delegate going, that'd be pretty sweet, and use some of the, the new Solaris tools with that. Not sure fully if that's possible yet. Also, probably gonna have to wait to see if Redshift, or see when Redshift gets updated, so I'm sure Houdini 19 doesn't support it yet, but, uh, or actually, the other way around, Redshift doesn't support Houdini 19 yet, so, um, Keep an eye out for all that. That's stuff that I want to take a look at in the future. But anyways, if you missed it, check out the last video going over XPU and all of the Material X stuff that we got going on here. 
and uh, some of the new tools and workflows that go around it. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out. If you want to take a look at some other videos on Houdini, I do have some stuff on past versions of Houdini on my channel, as well as Redshift, Octane, and a little bit of Cinema 4D and Clarice. So take a look at that if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.